Marley Pittman, and I'm the Director of Community Relations at Mid-City Redevelopment, and I serve on the board of Mid-City Merchants. Mid-City's Cultural District celebrated its 10th birthday last year, and it's been an incredible part of uh, developing the arts and creative capital in our area. It has helped us to invest in local businesses, beautify our neighborhoods, and create a flourishing art community for many. Heart of Baton Rouge. Uh, back in the early 90s, we were seeing a lot of people leaving our urban core for more suburban communities. Uh, but different groups like the Baton Rouge General and local neighbors and community leaders worked together to try and reinvest in this area and bring it back alive, redevelop uh, the semi urban neighborhood on the outskirts of downtown. Since then, we have seen incredible changes. Uh, we have seen the Government Street Corridor become revitalized. We've seen local businesses move to North Boulevard, and we've seen a lot of exciting interests from huge healthcare industries on Florida. Mid-City has come a long way in the 28 years that I have lived here, and it is incredibly exciting to see art at the center of all of it. Cultural Recreation and Tourism State Agency developed this new thing called a cultural district to try and invest in the cultures that we saw that were disappearing around us, but were an important part of our tourism economy, our culture economy, and our art economy. Whenever uh, the Mid-City Community Leaders, Mid-City Redevelopment Alliance, Mid-City Merchants were approached by the CRT uh, to start a cultural district, we knew that this was a perfect fit for some of the work that we were already doing. Uh, hosting art hops, promoting murals, and creative placemaking initiatives. Uh, so we were incredibly excited to kind of take on this challenge as one of the first cultural districts in this city and, and one of the first in the state. When the Mid-City Cultural District designation was given to us in 2009, we, uh, we were already hosting an annual art hub called White Light Night, but it was after this designation that we really expanded it to be the event that many know and love today. Uh, for those who are familiar with it, we have um, nearly 5,000 people come to our five-mile corridor-long art hop with hundreds of artists and local businesses uh, supporting and investing in the arts in our area. We, we built on this excitement for our community by hosting, along with Center for Planning Excellence, uh, a better block uh, in 2013, which was a technical urbanism demonstration, of course, but it was uh, also a creative placemaking effort. We used arts and nature and, and landscaping and beauty and murals to talk about a new vision for our uh, mid-city a new vision for our main commercial corridor, Government Street, that included bike lanes and sidewalks and tree plantings. Uh, and this creative placemaking effort was successful, and we ultimately see um, an incredible investment uh, in the city's uh, Government Street corridor. Since uh, the Cultural District, uh, we have done countless murals, countless art hops, uh, we have uh, supported the Mid-City Makers Market, which is a monthly arts market for local artists. We have seen um, the implementation, with the creation and beginning to see the implementation of our five-year public art plan, which includes 3D pieces, extensive murals, community branding, wayfinding, creative crosswalks, and, and so many other investments in our area. And inspired by the cultural district, we are finding new and creative ways to fund those types of art investments and uh, capital investments in our area. And we hope to see more of that extend to our other commercial corridors, North Boulevard and Florida Street with the uh, implementation of the movie VR plan by Mayor President Broom uh, to invest 44 million in both of those corridors that include arts, culture, uh, and community. kind of historic and cultural renovation that we've seen, and it, the biggest project we've seen is of course the Electric Depot. Uh, the original energy plant for Baton Rouge at the turn of the 20th century, um, built and part by Standard Oil, which is in fact what built this city, um, was left vacant for 
all of my life actually. Um, as I drove from my home to my school, I saw it often. And it was, uh, for those who are familiar with this, a brownstone uh, kind of lot, it, it needed to be completely clean from all of that kind of mechanical and all of the, the waste in the area. So no developer was really able to take it on for a long time. But the um, DNA architecture firm and um, Weinstein Nelson management company worked with uh, Bill Baton Rouge, which is the redevelopment authority in our city. Uh, they worked with CRT, they worked with Preserve Louisiana, they worked with Mid-City Redevelopment Alliance to pool historic tax credits that we had in this area, in part because of the Coldwood District, in order to clean that facility, in order to bring it back into commerce, and now it is the host of several successful businesses, uh, mixed income apartment units, and has incredible plans to grow in years to come. Uh, it was a historic renovation, so it's kept much of its you know, original brick look and feel, much of the original um, pillars and even the original crane operator in the ceiling, and so it's a beautiful space to come and see a mixture of old and new. And, and while the city is proud of its uh, home to these great big historic renovations, we're also really proud of all of the mom and pop shop investments that have been made in, um, in smaller spaces. All of the infill development we've seen uh, on, our, on our corridors to bring to life places that were un underutilized parking lots or buildings that had been abandoned for a really long time. Uh, as a part of the cultural district investment, we made Mid City Redevelopment Alliance and Mid City Merchants launch a facade program. So we called it the Facelift Grant, um, and it was a match for dollars spent on facade improvements. And we've done uh, to date at 79 facade improvement grants uh, since the cultural district designation, uh, helping our new local Italian grocery Canatellas open up and proving um, an underutilized space to bring in STEM design, a local marketing firm, uh, providing a, a great new mid-city mural for Jurassic Friends, so a local print shop that was actually born out of one of our high schools. So we're, we're proud of the work, but we're also incredibly impressed with the impact that these local businesses have had on our community and the pride that they take in, in creating a beautiful space for, for everybody. Seeing all of the incredible impact and growth of local businesses and our uh, on Government Street, we were inspired to expand the cultural district to include the other three major mid-city corridors, North Boulevard, which is a historic black-owned uh, local business corridor, um, you know, with small-scale uh, homes converted to businesses close up to the streets, small to no parking, um, really right for new types of walkable, bikeable, commercial space. And to expand the culture district to include Florida Boulevard, Florida Street, uh, which is a very different corridor, um, you know, but it is an important hub for healthcare, uh, for the our parks and recreation, BRAC, um, and many other kind of anchor institutions. And so we're seeing very different types of art and cultural development there, planned for the future. We're seeing murals, we're seeing community branding happening, but we're also seeing bigger um, capital improvement investments. The Baton Rouge General has committed to completely redesigning their facade. Uh, the Baton Rouge General actually worked with our community organizations to develop a new branding for a hospital. And if, many of us are familiar with hospital branding. It can be kind of um, very commercial or so, but they bucked that tradition, keeping with our arts and creativity here in Mid-City, and they created a brand new way to talk about their hospital with color and, and painting and arts and the script font, and they put Mid-City everywhere, all over uh, both their hospital and in their larger uh, marketing campaign, which is a testament to the changes in creative space on Florida Street as well, now that this culture district has expanded there. And we have more plans for the future of Mid-City on government in North and Florida. The Movie VR plan, which I mentioned, is a $44 million plan just on our commercial corridors, and it's going to um, potentially mimic the uh, complete street project we had on Government Street, or, or maybe a completely new design. Uh, 
But we know because we're working with those engineering firms that art, culture, community, creativity um, will all be at the heart of those designs. And so we're incredibly excited to see uh, where all of Mid City goes moving forward. When I talk to people who are interested in creating cultural districts in their area, and, and we are often reached out to as a resource, um, as a place where we, you may or may not be able to have your uh, questions answered, you know, I try and talk to them about the value of a cultural district. And tax credits are great on the sale of art, and historic preservation is, is key, and we've seen projects that wouldn't have existed without it. But in the day in, day out, the value of the Mid-City Cultural District uh, is in the name, as uh, perhaps Romeo and Juliet or, <laughs> would contest, but the value is in the name. The Cultural District process, allowed, in the process of creating it, it allowed us to set definite borders of our community. It allowed us to do outreach and say, like, hey, did you know you're a part of a place called Mid-City? And it matters, and it means this. It means creativity, it means culture, it means community. It means working together to create something that's more beautiful, has more meaning for you and for your family. So the name itself has been incredibly powerful. We love to use it. We love to put here in the Mid-City Cultural District everywhere we can. Um, and that has our residents have seen more value in that and being able to, and the pride in being able to say that, and businesses uh, and the pride in, in being able to invest in that has, has meant the world, um, perhaps even more than any tax credit or no sales tax could ever do. Mm -hmm.